Miriam, 14 years old, Tony, 15, and Desiree, 14, were three friends from the Valencian town of Alcacer, a small town about 20 kilometers from Valencia, with a population, in that year, 1992, of about 7,240 inhabitants, which that night on Friday, November 13th of that year, they disappeared under strange circumstances, before delving into the disappearance and chronology of that fateful afternoon. Let's get to know the girls a little better. Miriam Garcia Ibora began her first year at the Florida Institute, which was located in the town of Cataroja, about 10 or 11 kilometers from Alcacer. She liked ballet dance, although she was not good at it. Everyone who knew her had her as a very sensitive and romantic girl, and one of her great passions was writing poetry. Her loved ones also commented that she was shy and very reserved. Antonia Gomez Rodriguez preferred to be called Tony. She was the oldest of the three girls. She drooped school and wanted to turn 16, so she could go to work and buy her things. Was very fond of fashion and liked clothes. She was very shy, afraid, and couldn't stand being alone. Desiree Hernandez Folch, an excellent athlete, studied at a school in Alcacer and was very fond of skating. Had won several medals in different sports disciplines in which she had participated. People say that of the three of them, she was the one with the strongest and determined character and was a big animal lover. She especially loved cats. That Friday, November 13th, Miriam's father picked her up at the Cataroja bus stop around two o'clock when she was leaving school. This was not normal since Fernando Garcia, who was her father's name, didn't have the habit of going home to eat. But that day, he had to leave work earlier than normal because he had the flu. And on the way home, he decided to pick up his daughter. The fact that Miriam's father was sick is something that will have certain significance in the course of what happened that afternoon. About Desiree, we know from the testimony of her friend Esther, another girl who will also have relevance in what will happen later, that she spent the morning at her house since she was sick, and Desi went to keep her company, skipping classes and making a fuss. She left his house shortly before Esther's mother arrived from work. We have a radio recording of Tony since that day, she called a radio station popular among the young people of the town, where song dedications were made. And she listed her friends one by one, and told the announcer that she hadn't planned for the weekend yet. Here is the recording of that call. A call that Tony herself recorded to later show to her mother. Hola. Hola, dime tu nombre. Tony. Tony, ¿desde dónde, Tony? Desde Alcácer. Desde Alcácer. Tony, ¿cómo llevas tú la tarde de jueves? Pues bien. ¿Ya tienes más o menos planteado lo que vas a hacer ya mañana? ¿Que va a empezar el fin de semana o qué? No sé. Aún no lo sabes, ¿no? ¿no? El caso es que en casa no te vas a quedar. No, eso está claro. <ríe> eso está claro. ¿Toñi? Sí. Venga, ¿qué quieres escuchar? Pues el Peter Filling. El Mayor Tom. Sí. ¿No? ¿Y a qué se lo quieres dedicar? A Isabel, a Miriam, a Desi, sí. a Ana, a Maya, Marisa, Belina, sí. Belén, Esther, Carmen y Cristina. ¿Te la habías apuntado? Sí. Sí. Ah, yo es que digo, es que así de memoria yo no me sé tantos nombres de tantos amigos. Bueno, Oye, a ti, a ti. Ah, pues, pues muchas gracias. Mira, por lo menos esta mañana se lo estaba comentando yo a mi novia, que, que no puede ser. Todo el mundo me dedica a temas menos ella. Oye, Toñi, sí. muchas gracias por haber llamado y para ti va el mayor Tom de Peter Schilling, ¿vale? Vale. Hasta luego y gracias. On that fateful day, Miriam leaves the family home around 7 p.m. As stated in the statements that her father would make to the civil guard, we assume that Miriam goes to Tony's house, picks her up, and together go to pick up Desiree. The parents of all of them agree that the approximate hours of their marches are around 7 p.m. It seems from the statements of some witnesses, the girls go to the Zas Arcade, a very popular place in Alcacer at that time, where youth gathered to play for a while. Apparently, Miriam wanted to meet an ex-boyfriend named Leandro, they leave the arcade and head to the health center, where they are going to meet her friend Esther, who has to go get an injection because, as we said before, she was sick. In the vicinity of said center, they meet Francisco Antonio Soria Chabelli, a friend of the young women, and who places the time of the meeting around 7.45 p.m., a time that he says in the statement to the civil guard, he remembers well, because he was on her way to an exam for the school graduate. Apparently the girls meet Esther in said health center, and the four of them head to Esther's house, the once in said house, and according to Esther's statement to the civil guard, the girls expressed their intention of going to Cooler, a nightclub in Picassent, which that day was holding a party for students from the institute of said town, a private party to which only was accessed by invitation. An invitation that the girls had already refused to buy days before, 
to a witness that we will see later. Even so, the girls intended to get to Cooler and stay in the vicinity, in their own words, to see how cool was the party. Miriam calls home on the phone and asks her mother if her father can bring them to Cooler, which he usually does, to which her mother responds that, as she well knows, her father is sick in bed, and it's neither the day nor the time to go to a club. So the girl hung up the call nodding. This call, according to Esther's statements, is made from her own house. However, after the call, the girls decide to hitchhike to Cooler Club instead of going home, something corroborated by their mother who hears them talking of the subject and advises them not to do it, since it isn't safe as you never know who can pick you up. Now, we have a contradiction in the two statements. According to Esther, the girls leave their house at 8.20 p.m., a time that she certifies when looking at the clock of a video player, but her mother declares that they left the home around 5.50 p.m., time, that agrees neither with the statement of his daughter nor with that of the parents of the three girls, who say that they left their homes around 7.00 p.m. If we continue with the chronology of events marked in the case summary, the girls, after leaving their sick friend's house, head towards the last traffic light at the Alcacer exit, and there they decide to hitchhike. It is at 8.20 p.m. when Francisco José Hervas and his girlfriend Mariluz López see the three girls at the traffic light, and he decides to stop and ask them where they are going. They told them that they were going to Picascent, to Coolor Club, and, according to the statement of both to the civil guard, let them in and inform them that the car is broken so they can't take them to the nightclub because the car is losing fuel, but they are going to a workshop at the entrance to pick a cent so they could take them to the Mary's gas station. Right at the beginning of the town, the girls agree and travel in the car for a short trip, no more than five minutes. According to Francisco Jose's statement, the girls were calm, but his girlfriend stated that she saw them a little nervous, according to both of them. They dropped the girls at the aforementioned gas station, and they didn't see the girls again. There were some contradictions years later during the trial, when Francisco was asked for the vehicle in which they were traveling to pick a cent. He answered that it was a golden seat Ronda. And his girlfriend at that time, Marie Luce, declares when asked the same question, that the vehicle was a white Ford Orion. The girls begin their march, from Marie's gas station towards Cooler, a walk of approximately 1.2 kilometers or 0.74 miles, just after passing said gas station, they meet Jose Antonio Cano Yatzer, who is riding his motorcycle down the avenue from the nightclub. He states that he crosses paths and greets the three girls around 8.20 p.m. According to his statement to the civil guard, this witness, as we had said, is the one who on previous days offered the three young women tickets to attend the party that Friday, and says that the girls declined to buy the tickets, so it seemed strange that they were heading to the party at that time. From this meeting it seems, the girls continue up the street in the direction of the nightclub, and it is at Paraguayta Street, when Maria Dolores Badal Soria, who lives at number one of said street, and her window faces Jomdwar Avenue, where the girls are supposed to be getting up, she sees right at the corner, how the three girls continue hitchhiking and a small white vehicle stops, in which, according to her statement, are traveling four people inside. She watches how the three girls get in, and she says, was intrigued on how the three girls fit in that small car if there were already four people inside. The civil guard carried out several investigations from the woman's home and verified that the visibility was complete and that Maria Dolores could have seen, without problems, the action she was recounting. The problem with this witness lies in the schedules. According to her, she see the three girls around 8 hours p.m., a time she remembers because the public lighting had just been turned on. In the investigation, the civil guard discovered that said public lighting, taking into account that at that moment was the middle of November and it gets dark quite early, they were turned on several hours before. This is the last testimony that cites having seen the three girls alive. There is no trace of them from here. They were never in Cooler and no one saw them in its vicinity. The parents doubt that they went to said nightclub, even though in their own statements to the civil guard, they comment that the girls were going to the club. The truth is that the girls had a pickup time around 10 p.m., and if they went to Cooler around 8 p.m., they would have little time to arrive, stay for a while, and return home. Even so, we have all been young, and we know that at that age, decisions are often made without thinking about schedules, be that as it may, the three girls disappear without a trace, and it is from here that begins an entire odyssey for three families that will last 75 days, and in which all of Spain will attend as another member of these families, 
and will share the pain and the anguish of a search that seems incessant and eternal.